Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 812 for the 15th of May uh, for the Ukraine war or the special military operation in, in Ukraine and for your, if you are new, SIPREP means situation report and uh, uh, we go to start off with frontline changes report there is a two one is Staritsia and another one is a Robotini so uh, over at Staritsia, uh, there is some changes uh, just like one, this uh, geolocation location of Russian forces, uh, basically just off this uh, our previous front line, which means that the Russian forces have uh, advanced a little bit from where they previously were, and are uh, expanding their control a little bit. The fact that they have expanded their control so little invalidated my theory that they're gonna capture the village in twenty four to forty eight hours. Uh, the Ukrainians found their way here and managed to probably uh hold them back. Well, uh, which is probably why the advance is now becoming so slow, which also then validates uh, what I have mentioned in the SIP rep yesterday, that the, the Ukrainians have to make a division and uh, to really plug the hole, and they indeed have uh, plug, starting to plug the hole. So that's very good, because if not, then the Russians will start to break through and it's going to create a lot of problems for the Ukrainians, be it militarily or uh, in terms of uh, public... Uh, relations so uh over at robotine at the zaporizhia front uh, there is a geolocation uh basically a fpv drone attack on ukrainian forces basically invalidated russian claims so uh, this strike around here shows that the ukrainians most likely have the entirety of this area here so uh so this invalidates the russian mapping uh in this way so the ukrainians uh, mapping uh seems to be more accurate and uh, this is very uh Indicative because Deep State UA is very conservative, so you know Deep State UA's mapping, the pro-Ukrainian mapping, is always been uh, more accurate, but not necessarily always have all the information. So this is just something to note. So that's all for the frontline changes report. We go into the strategic and tactical reporting. First thing first was the report of a uh, Mig twenty nine, a Ukrainian Mig twenty nine got shot down over Ukraine. So uh, so that's about it. It's reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. Is uh was apparently shot down by air defense so not exactly uh, not exactly sure where this happened uh, we go into the khaki front uh over at the khaki front uh there is this is where the russian um khaki offensive is ongoing and it looks like the progress is slowing down uh because there is not much frontline changes are uh, being uh, reported over the past 24 hours there's a few weird stuff so uh first thing first is this uh attack on Hrasniv. So or Granov, so or Granov, uh, so many names. So uh, the Russian Defense Ministry mentioned that they have hit the Ukrainian forces over at Gra uh, Hraniv or Granov. So Ukrainian forces uh, protecting this uh, border border town uh, got hit. It's unsure if this is actually an attack, uh, in terms of a ground offensive, or is this just a fire attack? So uh, we will definitely have to pay pay attention and see whether this will be reported again tomorrow or Russians uh, suddenly report that they have captured Kranif. So uh, it is important uh, to note because Kozacho Lopan is a rather strategically important uh, town. Uh, it helps to create a buffer and this was previously a stronghold for the Russians when they are still holding the, the northern part of Kharkiv. So and uh, we move into the uh, Lipsy sector of the khaki front at this region here um we have the russian defense ministry uh declared the capture of uh Kliboke or glubokoye uh which is easier to pronounce uh hiliboke is much harder you can try now say hiliboke difficult right not easy uh, you know you should appreciate you no know, me pronouncing you no know, ukrainian spellings i know the ukrainians don't pronounce this they actually also called it the uh, glubokoye or glubokoye but you know yeah but they want to spell it this way so i'm going to pronounce it in english and uh over at lukiansi the russian defense ministry also announced the capture so this uh the first time we have reported the capture is two days ago on the 13th of may or rather no on the 14th of may uh happened on the 13th of may and um uh, but according to Raiba, uh, the Russian source, they say that the village was actually taken on the 11th of May. So that is a little bit early. Uh, that was like the second day of the, the offensive. Sounds a little bit early. But anyway, whatever it is, it is now kept, uh, announced to be have captured. So we gave... Uh, we, so we didn't give the flag because we already given the flag before, which is actually in the wrong color. Freaking hell. 
<laughs> I actually I didn't realize I'll put it in the wrong color. So anyway, so um there is a various geo locations in this area here as the Russians are continuing to push towards Lipsy. And uh, there is geolocation of Russian forces in these two areas. However, Ukrainian forces are starting to counter-attack from Lipsy direction towards Hiliboke. And uh, this is already reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. And in fact, we have geolocation uh, of Ukrainian forces storming a house, capturing some Russian soldiers uh, over at this location. So with this confirmed Ukrainian uh, forces is now counter-attacking and it looking like uh by the footage it looks like this this uh ukrainian troops are are not cannon folders these are trained troops so uh we will definitely continue to monitor probably it could be the foreign fighters it could be some of these are uh, more elite groups it could be the kraken or whatever i i, I didn't really care you know the, about units so you can actually check out i think maybe theta mapping i think they talk about units i don't really care about units i care about borders so uh, because it doesn't matter who uh, what the uh, units are because uh, a certain units may be deployed in this direction but actually they only have like 20 percent of its manpower no <laughs> and then actually they they don't act, they don't really have the manpower to fight no but the the, the unit name sounds very big no but uh which is why you know i avoid doing that because no all uh, manpower the capacity the, the how much of uh, how much troops are there in the unit is all operational secret so uh no one's supposed to know uh, this kind of information and uh, if it got leaked it also may not actually be accurate so you no know, I, I try not to follow the units because it will get very confusing so and uh you probably you know don't understand although it sounds very good you know the 131st impeccanized brigade you know like it, oh, actually but in your brain actually it means nothing i know because it means nothing to me <laughs> so anyway um so we move on uh so that's all from uh, uh not that's all there is a the Ukrainian Defense Ministry men mentioned that there's, they repelled attacks in the area of Slobozanske, which is very weird because Slobozanske is south of Lipsy. Uh, Lipsy is here. So for the Russians to be fighting in the area of Slobozanske means the Russians have taken a lot of grounds, I guess. So uh, a bit weird, uh, kind of a weird report. But Ukrainian Defense Ministry do di do this kind of thing quite often. So you know, it's not uh, new. Uh, there is a geolocation of Lancer attacking some Ukrainian positions in the forest. So, uh, but not very important, but just confirming Ukrainian presence are there. So uh, if you're pro-Ukrainian, uh, you can now start to brief. You can feel better about it because the Ukrainians are now actively defending this location. And uh, uh, this front line, and it looks like they're going to be able to uh, slow down, if not hold back the Russian offensive. But also take note that I did mention a lot of times, this could be just a diversionary attempt to draw in uh, good Ukrainian forces away from the other front line that the Russians actually wanted to focus on. So so just uh, just pay attention. Uh, over the Stadisia sector, uh, of, other than the geolocation of the Russian forces pushing into the uh, eastern part of Stadisia, Ukrainian forces are also allegedly counter-attacking in the Stadisia region. So, which which I mentioned corroborates the, the slow progress in this area here. So we will continue to monitor. Uh, there's not much to talk about here anymore. We Over at the Voschans uh, sector, uh, there is various interesting happening. Uh, so according to information from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, they are now counter-attacking. They literally say that they are counter-attacking counter and they have partially pushed back the Russian forces. So fighting, they claim, is in the northern and north northwestern outskirts. Outskirt actually means outskirt, like outside. So, um, which is would be subjective because to claim that the fighting is so far away is a bit, um, uh, contradicting. I would say compared to where the previous geo locations were, the geo location that we do have was a tank, a Russian tank that's burning in this area here. So Ukrainian forces attacking uh from through the forest uh through. Uh, and uh, trying to cut off the highway is possible, which resulted in this uh, destruction uh, of the tank makes sense. But to say that the Russians are totally pushed out, uh, I know some of the Ukrainian claims are dead. I don't think that could be accurate unless the Russians have already started to redraw after accomplishing their, you know, their, their diversionary attempts. That could also be possible, but uh, it would be kind of like a silly thing to do. Um, like, you know, you... But whatever it is, no, what do I know? So that's uh that's all the fighting is ongoing. Uh the front line is very, very uh, blurry. I, right now in Voschansk, fighting is 
very sure to be in the northern half of Voschan. So uh, Raiba also mentioned uh, that uh, any reports of capture of Voschan is uh, just nonsense. Uh, the reality is that the northern part is under the Russian control and then the Ukrainians presence are actually in the northern part. So there are Ukrainian uh, forces in certain part of the northern northern part of the city. So they are fighting. So this is actually reported by Raiba themselves. Russian and Ukrainian Defense Ministry both talk about the fighting fighting in this area here. So uh, we will continue to monitor. So I'm going to start talking to the different accents. You know, and, and over the Taikei, there is a joint location of uh, U Russian, uh, Ukrainian forces getting attacked by uh, the thermobaric missiles of the Russian forces. This brings into some kind of the uh, um, um, contradiction to the previous uh, reports that the Russian forces have already captured Taikei on the 11th of May, according to the information from the Russian uh, uh the Russian uh, sources, uh, Raiba. So we will uh, tentatively, I will not be changing the front line or the mapping of the Russian sites because I do not know when this video was taken. So it could be a possibility that this is this uh, video of the or this attack is actually comes before the capture that was reported on the eleventh. But we'll definitely, you know, put this into consideration because the, the is, there is no need to change the Russian mapping just yet because we have the Ukrainian mapping that shows that the front line is actually at this area. So we're going to move on away from the uh, from this uh, Kharkiv front. And uh, before we go into the Kherson front, as usual, uh, there, we're going to the Sumi sector because there is a similar report that comes with the one at... Uh, talking just near uh, Kozacha Lopan at Hranev. Um, in the northern part of Sumi, there is an, uh, the same report. The uh, Zuraf Zurafka was actually mentioned uh, by uh, by the Russian Defense Ministry that they have hit Ukrainian forces in this area here. I'm not, I'm not sure if this is an, is an attack as well, similar to the situation over at the Hranev. So we will continue to monitor the situation over at the Sumi region. We move on. To, uh, moving to the Kherson front. At the Kherson front, we have the uh, Russian forces continue to be attacking uh, Ukrainian forces over at Krinky. Uh, this is reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry as usual. So, so Ken, I talk in uh, this kind of accent. Uh, so, for those that are complaining about my you no know, English, you no, know, uh, you can you can you understand it better? No, uh, or you want uh, more another accent? You no, know, so the both words, you no. Know? Uh, and uh, over at this um, Dnipro River, uh, th there is still shelling reported as Zolota, Bauka, as well as Nikopol. So this is a continuation of the usual that the Russians uh, have been doing uh, against the uh, Ukrainian forces over the northern part of the Dnipro River. We'll continue to monitor in this area here. <clears throat> Moving into the uh, Zaporizhia front. So this is Zaporizhia city and uh, this is the Zaporizhia front. Um, and over, over this uh, Orikiv sector uh, of the Zaporizhia front, and uh, we have continuous, uh, the, the similar report from the previous time the Russian forces are attacking at Robotini. Uh, this time around, we also have reports at the northwestern part of Rebove, and there is some uh, fire attack, if not Russian attack, towards uh, Malatomashka. So, uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, they have declared the capture of Robotini at Zaporizhia. And, uh, however, this information is actually uh, in, uh, contradicted by the Russian source, Raiba. According, they say that contrary to the statements made by the Russian Defense Ministry, they say that the enemy, present at, uh, the enemy which is the Ukrainian forces, are still present over at Robotini, at least in the northern outskirts. So, uh, and of course, during the frontline changes report, I have already mentioned uh, of this geolocation of Ukrainian forces in the northern part of Robotine, which might actually bring credits to the this uh, Russian sources claims. So, which means that uh, we we are still not really have the capture of Robotine, but I will give the flag to the Russians because the Russian MO they have made uh, made this statement. But of course, we will contradict them later. Then we can call the Russian Defense Ministry fake news. So uh, moving on to the Donetsk front. So uh, so uh, so you know, see which accent you like, you know. So um, yeah, moving into the Donetsk front. Sorry, I have to entertain myself. I, today I feel very bored. Uh, over at the Donetsk front, uh, Russian forces are attacking. Uh, 
Staro Mayosuke, Uruzaini. Uh, they are attacking from Solo K towards Vodian, uh, from Slavne towards Konstantinivka, uh, towards uh, pra Paraskovievka, Giovgivka, and the Battle of Krasnohorivka comes from two different directions from uh, from the south and from the east. So uh, over in the Velika Novosilka sector, we have your location of Russian forces over at the border uh, near the where the front line is being marked on the DPA's mapping. So this corroborates where the Russians are and the Russians are still putting pressure on the Ukrainians. I don't think the Russians are putting, uh, they are doing assault into Uruzaini itself. I think they are just uh, just there, you know, just giving the Ukrainians a uh, no. It's, you know, it's like mosquito. <laughs> you know, it was like the mosquito. Mosquito don't need to bite you. They just need to fly around, and uh, you you just you just feel very disturbed. So the Russian forces are also attacking in Staro Mayoske region. We do not know exactly what they are doing right now uh, because there's no more news. So we will continue to monitor, and uh, so we move on. Uh. Over at this uh, Novo Mihailivka area, uh, the Russian forces are attacking uh, from Slotke towards Vodian. Anyway, the, the this new Ukrainian Defense Ministry um, report writer is a bit more specific, as I mentioned in the previous rap. They talk about you no know, Staro, uh, Staro Mihailivka towards Krasnohorivka, Slavne towards Baraskovievka, Slotke towards Vodian. They put it very clearly the direction of the attack. So this is very very helpful. So you know if you are watching you no know, Ukrainian Defense Ministry, thank you so much for the help. Uh, Slava Ukraini and uh, the the Russians uh, are attacking from Solotke towards Vodian. They are attacking from Slavne uh, towards uh, Paraskovievka, and then there was this attack towards Konstantinivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry as well in a different format. So this is still ongoing. Uh, no frontline changes report means that it's not not something very significant. We move on uh, into the Marinka sector. Uh, there is Russian forces at fighting reported uh, in the Georgivka region. Uh, so nothing much to talk about because nothing is happening. Over at Krasnohorivka, the Battle of Krasnohorivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, they mentioned uh, Staro, Stara Mihailivka, which is Staro Mihailivka. We see they don't even uh, no never mind it's okay uh, they they are attacking in this direction and then um, there is also fighting being reported by the Russian Defense Ministry about the fighting in Krasnohorivka clearly the fighting is coming from two di different directions right now in a pincer of sort so we will continue to monitor and uh, see how this develops uh, over at the Donetsk front so now I'm I want to try the you know, try try lay hate the 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 the, the red neck the, the south south southern part of America the Dixie way of speaking and coming over in the southern part of the that uh, the the Africa from um there is fire reported at the Nevsky the Ukrainian fought counter attack at Netlove Russians Russians attack at Mik Wom and Semenivka. Uh, this is a very difficult accent, but so anyway the. The, the Ukrainian forces are geolocated uh, just north of Netelove. So, um, yeah, so it just shows the presence there. It's a mother. Uh, the mother's day just passed and this mother got destroyed. So, um, so uh, but that's about it. The Russians are not making progress. The Ukrainians are putting up very good defense uh, so far. Uh, so the, the breakthrough, the outbreak out, everything have stopped. The Ukrainians have uh, put it together. So, you know, so anyway, Ukraine holds. Uh, now we move on to the northern flank. In the northern uh, northern flank of the ADFK front, Ukraine forces are on the counter attack. They are attacking towards Ocheritine and towards Korami, as well as Slovyove. While the Russians are pushing Novo Alexandrivka and uh, in the west of Ocheritine. And if you look at this, is this looks like a, a deliberate attempt to pincer the Ukrainian uh, the Russian forces and actually you no know, strand strand stranded them you no know, into an encirclement. But of course, uh, talk is easy. You know, the, the actual action is going to be a lot more difficult. So that's all from the ADFK front. We move into the New York front. At the New York front, Russian forces are attacking. Um, I need to pull down. Attacking towards New York as well as fighting in the area of Mayos. But uh, that's all we know. We move on away from the uh, New York front into the. Uh, Bakhmut front. In the southern flank of the Bakhmut front, Russian forces attack at no Kuryumivka, Andriyevka, as well as fighting in the area of Klishyevka. Russian forces geolocated located um, in the area of Andriyevka and Zelenopilia. It's important to note, uh, in this geolocation, location, a total tank got destroyed. And according to the report from Deep State UA, the pro-Ukrainian source, they say that uh, the, the, they are using javelins and 
FPV drones. J javelins have not been in the battlefield for a long time. We haven't seen javelins much for a long time. At least it's not being reported. But in the latest, uh, you know, the, the transfer of the weaponry from United States to Ukraine, javelins is part of this new package. So I believe this might be the new reinforcement, the new resupplies coming to the Ukrainian side that allows them to, you know, now take on all these turtle tanks. Turtle tanks are actually... Um, uh, it, it works only in a very specific uh, circumstances. It's not a magical thing. Um, so it, it, it works because the Ukrainians have no means of taking out uh, a tank with no the, the kind of a metal sheeting, you no know, defending it. Uh, it is good to protect the, the crews from uh, FPV drones attacks. Uh, but when it comes to Javelin, Javelin is just way too powerful, I think. So anyway, we move on to, uh, into the uh, northern sector or the northern half of the this uh Bakhmut front there is fighting reported at Kalinina according to the information from from the Russian defense ministry Joe location uh, of TOS uh, the thermobaric rockets being uh, striking Novi and there's another Joe location uh, of counter artillery action south of Mikhail, uh, Mikol, Mikolaivka so that's all from the Bakhmut front if I'm not mistaken yep that's all from the Bakhmut front we move into the Sivas front the Sivas front continue to look very intense but no we have no re no information about frontline changes Russians attacking at uh, Bilokhorivka, Vakon Okayamske, Sperne, uh, south, south, southwest of Sperne, uh, in in the western part of Ruzolivka and at Ruzolivka. So this, the Russians are pushing sp uh, Sivas in all directions, but you know there is totally no news coming out from this front. We do not know what exactly is happening, and uh, except that we know that they are fighting there. So uh, at uh, the south of Serbianka, there is a. Uh, artillery system and a tank getting destroyed by the Russian Defense Ministry uh, in the, this defensive position uh, south of Serbianka. So anyway, well, that's about it. Um, we move into the criminal front. At the criminal front, Russian forces are attacking Toske and uh, also attacking this area is uh, Novo Sadove. They are moving in the direction of Novo Sadove. Ukrainian forces counterattack at Makievka. So we will continue to monitor the situation around here. Um, moving on, uh, over at the Svetovay front, uh, Russian forces are attacking. Let's see. Okay. Um, should I zoom in? Mm, okay, let's zoom in then. Russian forces are attacking in the area of Novo Yehorivka. Ukrainian forces counter attack at that area. Russian forces are attacking at Sadoklibove, at Nadia, uh, Miaso Zarevka, as well as uh, Stalmekivka. So this is the current situation. The Svetovay is very similar to the Sivas front situation. The, this seems like the new focus. So the, the this these few other places seems to be the new focus. If you compare to the Adyevka front, Adyevka front is not as intense now. Uh, and uh, it looks like you no, know, the Russians are just you no know, playing playing hide and seek, you no, know, as to where the main offensive is. We move on uh, further north. We have the Russians attacking towards Pishani. Uh, from the Tabaivka region and uh, from Berestovay. So this is ongoing. And uh, if you zoom out a bit, uh, you, will, you will see that uh, there is this direction. And there's another direction around here. Another direction around here. So you can uh, project that uh, all these are in the direction um, of moving either towards Borova or moving towards Senkove. So we have this possible direction. We can also you know, do this. So uh, we will continue to monitor and see what exactly the Russians are doing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we move on into the Kupians run. At the Kupians run, Russian forces are attacking Sinkivka to a Petropolivka as well as Ivanivka. So that's about it. Uh, Kupians run is always like a scam. We, you, you, we always talk about it, but always, always no, nothing much. Uh, uh, nothing much. But if you look at this entire Oskyu front, uh, that means Kremina, Svetove, and uh, Kupians combined. The entire skill front, Russians are at really attacking in a lot of different directions. So we will continue to monitor. And uh, that's about it. So this is the summary for the day of uh, 812 for the 15th of May. Do press the like button. And, uh, and uh, of course, subscribe. If you're new If you're new to this channel, you must subscribe. You know, If not, you will get emotional damage every day. I curse you. Um, uh, to need to drink water every day until you die and i'll see you guys in the next update